I've made it to a road with nobody on it. Um, and I wanted to start making these little video clips for people who want to try to make a living in the horse industry but don't really know how. And I, um, you know, have a, a few different ways that I make money to keep me from having to work behind a desk, which is not something that I want to do, right? So it's just not for everybody and it, it never really was for me. So I've kind of just been a little bit of a hustler, but I am finishing up a horse haul right now. Um, I've got an empty rig and I'm just headed home. And there are several ways to do this. You can do it publicly or privately. I always prefer to do things. In half a mile, keep left to continue on Texas 158 um, West. Follow signs for State 158. Privately. So there's just a little bit more exclusivity there. I feel like you get a little bit higher in clients and you get to be a little bit Keep more picky about Texas 158 West. the horses that you're putting in your horse trailer. So I have one rig right now um, and on Texas 158 West for 63 miles. I obviously don't want to be putting horses in my trailer that are going to like mess it up because this is also what I run barrels in. I don't want sick horses in my trailer. I don't want horses that are bad haulers or hard to handle. So I don't typically um, allow, I don't haul studs. Um, I mean, unless, you know, I know the stud. I don't haul from sale barns. Um, if I'm hauling to a vet clinic, it has to be for something like a surgery. It can't be for like any sort of respiratory anything um, because I'm putting my mares and my babies and my good horses in the same trailer. So a lot of people just don't really know how to get started and so I started just hauling for friends and people that I knew privately who did not want to put their horse on public transport for whatever reason and have their horses go all over the country just to go five hours away. Um, because a lot of public transport, the horses basically just get stacked in a trailer and then dropped off as they go. And um, if you think that there are not some people who pay for their horses to be, you know, a little bit more than you to have their horse dropped off first or whatever, like it happens all the time. And so I just did not uh, want to be one of those haulers. And that was just a personal preference. I wanted to be really picky about what in my rig, uh, what went in my rig. So. I started hauling for friends and they understood that there's no such thing as fill rates or anything like that. Like if you want me to haul to Oklahoma and back, I don't haul for a living or, you know, this isn't my primary income. Also, I'm not going to stack my trailer. So I will take your horse to Oklahoma and back and you're going to pay for an empty rig back home. And people are willing to do that to get their horse where it needs to go directly and most of the time what I do unless I just can't find a ride and then it just is what it is is that person has to pay me ahead of time for the entire trip there and back even if back is empty and then if I find a ride back or maybe so I have a three horse trailer and I don't stack it. So I leave a hole in the middle just in case horses kick, there's an accident or whatever. Like we just try to min minimize risk there. Um, so I can only take two. And unless, unless it's all the same people's horses or whatever and the horses know each other, that's a little different. But for the most part, I don't stack my ring. And so if someone has another horse that needs to go that direction, and when I say that direction, it needs to be within 100 miles of the original person's payment, like where, where they paid me to go, um, or back, then I actually will discount the original who paid for the entire trip empty home. And I will make sure that I make the profit that I need to make it worth my time, but I'm also really fair and make sure that everybody is happy with their quote. So it's not necessarily a fill rate. Um, what it is, is I, I do 
for the most part, split the holes minus my day rate and minus um, my hotel rate or whatever. So the way I do it is I try to make sure, and this is going to get harder with diesel prices going up, but I haul for less than a dollar a mile, which I know people are like, oh my God, that's like a dollar fifty underneath what most haulers do. It is, but I also don't stack my trailer, and so I don't have to deal with near the headache. And I'm very particular about what goes in my rig. So I, I most of the time it's less than a dollar a mile. Um, I also add though a day rate, which is $120 a day, which will probably go up because everything else is going up. And a tire charge, which is usually a hundred bucks, but might go up because everything else is going up. And then I make sure like I really, I know my truck really, really well, and most of the time I know where you know the terrain that I'm hauling in. But I kind of make sure, like, okay, every four hours I typically stop, fill up with diesel, let the horses' legs rest for a while, let them go to the bathroom, offer water, blah blah blah. Okay, common sense hauling things. So every four hours I fill up or top off. It's a hundred dollars every time I have to stop. So every four hours is a hundred dollars right now if diesel keeps going crazy then like right now I was paying like 315 320 it was high you know but it still doesn't cost a hundred dollars to fill up my truck what that hundred dollars does is it buys me snacks it fills up my truck and it buys me a box of death if I need it to buy me a box of death um, so I make sure that all the math works out so every four hours, I charge $100 plus $120 day rate. So if I spend the night, if I, if I drive and I have to spend the night and then drive the rest of the trip the next day, then I charge two day rates. It's whatever, whatever amount of time I'm on the road. Each day, starting from midnight, okay, is a day rate. And then if I'm going to get a hotel, which I have a living quarters trailer, but sometimes, you know, you just want to take a shower and relax. Like I charge a hotel rate. Um, I don't typically take halls that require over the night stays with horses. I, I try to avoid that. Um, that's another thing about hauling privately is you don't have to take those long hauls if you don't want to. So I try to avoid taking the long hauls. So I can comfortably, me, myself, and I drive 12 hours a day without getting tired. Um, I eat really healthy on the road. I try to eat healthy anyways, but I eat really healthy on the road, and I keep my energy levels up, and I make sure every four hours I'm getting out, walking, stretching, um, my horses are resting, and so 12 hours I'm really, really comfortable with, and so after that, like, I don't, if it's any further than that, I usually don't take the trip. Um, I, I won't take the job. And so that's basically how I do my breakdown. Um, and I, so this trip I went to basically Houston, Brian dropped jumpers off at each place, picked up a Colt and brought her back um, half, like, halfway, and then I'm empty going home, which is another four hours going home empty, but that is paid for, because the person who asked me originally to take her horse to Brian paid, oops, pushed to something, cancel, she paid there for the, no contacts in your phone book. To send a text message, say something like send Cancel! text message to 206 Cancel! Cancel! Cancel it! Cancel! Cancel! No! I didn't understand oh what you said. Oh my god. Uh, so anyway, so she paid for $700 for basically there and back, right, for her horse. And then what I did 
was I billed, she found a ride for a horse to Houston, which is 100 miles from Bryan. So, or where I was going around Houston was 100 miles from Bryan. So I charged that lady half plus for that 119 miles, I charged her an extra $100. I kept the $100. I reimbursed the original 350 because she found the split. I didn't have to do that. And then, so she got half, basically half her trip paid for. And I still made my 700 and well, and then the mileage in between, which was another hundred, um, which didn't cost me that much in diesel. I, I never had to stop and fill up. I had already had it, but I charged another hundred for those miles. And then I picked up the horse and brought it, the colt and brought it halfway home for 150, which was less than a dollar a mile. I think it was 178 miles exactly and I charged 150 so she is really happy because she you know got it for less than a dollar a mile but I could do that because the, the original posted paid the whole trip and nobody was in the trailer any longer than they had to be other than the Brian horse the original which because she found the ride to Houston it just worked out where I dropped Houston off first um but then it was like 100 miles, you know, so it's really not, it's like an hour and a half after you've been standing in the trailer for eight, like what's another hour and a half. Um, so yeah, I mean, it worked out really well for everybody. Everybody at the end of the day ended up paying less than a hundred dollars. I mean, less than a dollar a mile. And I made, because I did not have to replace a tire and because I stayed at my friend's house in the living quarters, did not have to pay for a hotel, but I charged for all those things. So, and I didn't have to use them, thank goodness. And then plus my profit, plus my day rate. So I made, after it was all said and done, about $500 in two days. And I'll be home by lunch to have lunch with my husband and pick my kids up from school. And so it was an easy 250 for me each day. Hauling for friends, nice horses that haul well, that are not sick, and um, you know, in nice safe places. And so yeah, it was good. And even, and because I charged for the tire, because I charged for the hotel and my day rates, and a little bit extra on top of you know diesel and I didn't eat all of that like I you know it might have only charged me or cost me $75 to fill up somewhere and not a hundred well that's $25 that I made right there as long as I don't go in the convenience store and eat $25 worth of snacks so which I don't so um anyways there's that that's how I do my hauling if anybody wanted to know and you know things change um, not every experience is awesome, but this was a really easy trip, so I just wanted to share.